Okay, so my weather station is now complete. Here's the indoor unit with the Arduino Mega 2560 Pro there. And then we've got um, the TFT display. We've got a big capacitor in the back there across the five volt power to stabilize any fluctuations in voltage. We've got a BME um, 280 um, temperature, humidity and pressure sensor. We've got an LTC 4311 um, active terminator on the I2C. We've got a real-time clock. Then we've got some buttons down here and some connectors. Let's get the display on again. So the connectors, so that's our internal temperature and humidity, etc. Then our outside sensors go along this cable into this wall socket, which I've added on my Cat6 panel. And then the uh, there's another BME 280 just outside on this wall with the cable going straight through the wall. So to minimize the distance on the I2C. And then there's two Cat6 cables going up to the ceiling across to the outside sensors, which are over there somewhere, which I'll show you later. So the user interface is pretty simple, really. We've got four buttons, a couple of LEDs. So we've got a TF card for storing data and letting it restore the graph data after a power off. And the TF card button just cycles whether that is so-called ejected or not. And the green light comes on if it's ejected which means then you can take the card out and the code won't write to the card um, or try and read from it. When the card's being read or written to, the red light comes on. Then we've got these other buttons. So display, it toggles around the displays. So for each sensor, we've got a graph. These are just simply drawn with lines. The X axis, we've got one pixel per hour. Uh, so that allows us 12 um, days of data. And vertically, the display, the um, the units are fixed. So we've got rainfall, wind speed, wind direction, external temperature, external humidity, external light, external pressure, internal temperature, internal humidity. Then we've got some other display modes. We've got an emoji there, which is based on the pressure trend over the last five hours. If it's been consistently up, it shows you a green happy face. Consistently down or level a unhappy face. And if it's been, um, not doesn't meet either of those trends, it's just a white neutral face. Then we've got some text displays. We've got this hour, which is the readings taken since the end of the last hour extrapolated to the end of the hour and how many samples have been taken all these screens has the clock in the right top right corner and the bottom left hand corner shows you if the long backlight delay is enabled or not last reading so this is the last reading taken from each sensor and we've got some raw a to d conversion uh, readings there useful for calibration and then we've got some diagnostics, whether the different parts of the system are working properly, size of the two data files, free RAM, which is useful for looking, see if there are any memory leaks, hours on and cached writes. When the TF card's disabled, uh, it will store how many data points haven't been written. And as long as that's not uh, exceeded the 288 um, size of the array for the graph, you won't lose any data because when the card's next available, it will write. So that's a display. And it just goes back to the first one. Um, style just changes the graph style slightly. The best one by far is this line graph. Then you've got a sort of filled under the line or scatter graph. If I press and hold the style button, it goes into a setup menu. Let's you set the display mode when it's turned on, the, which of the graph types it uses, uh, the backlight brightness, which is controlled PWM onto the um, P2 
in controlling the backlight. Uh, when there's been a power outage, you can set whether, whether there's a gap in the graph to signify this of 1, 3 or 24 hours. Uh, offsets for the BME 280 readings, calibration offsets. And finally, we'll have a um, clock um, setting uh, thing, which I won't go into. These little glitches have been fixed in my latest upgrade to the software, but I haven't uploaded that yet. And then finally, I'll show you the backlight button. So that just toggles the backlight on and off. Uh, normally the time and out is uh, 30 seconds, but if you hold it in, you get that yellow uh, star in the bottom left, which means it's now got a timeout of five minutes. So that's about it for the internal unit. Now let's see what's outside. So this box on the north wall of my house has the external BME 280 in it, wired straight through the wall to minimise the length on the I2C bus. And then the other sensors are up on near the roof. Can we see what, how many, any? So we've got bird spikes above them. Then we've got an anemometer, rotating cup anemometer, and a wind vane. And we've got a tipping bucket rain sensor. And then we've also got in the junction box in the middle, you can't really see it here, there is a photodiode and LM. 710 I think um, op amp to amplify the signal and that's about it. Oh, sorry that's an LM741 op amp and we can see the light readings there roughly calibrated using an app on a smartphone and the firmware is available in a link in the description.